The Nasdaq hitting an all-time high, but industrial energy really lighting it up today. Joining me now to discuss Payne Capital Senior Wealth Advisor, and by the way, I'm, it's a group that I'm not affiliated with, Courtney Dominguez. Courtney, uh, first before, uh, just overall, your, I, your thoughts about this rally that keeps picking up, it keeps finding a different reason every day to keep moving higher. Yeah, and Charles, we've been talking about this for quite a while, that I think the markets are very optimistic right now, and I think we really need to listen to that. There's been a lot of doomsayers out there finding a reason why the markets can't go higher, and the markets are finding the reasons to go higher. And I think at the end of the day, the markets are really what we need to listen to. They've been going up for quite a while, and then we're getting positive data coming out, like that great jobs report on Friday, which is validating how much of a return we've had so far. And I think we need to listen to that. Now, you are a, a value investor, at least that's my sense, you know, talking to you over the last couple of years and value, mm -hmm. you know, at least, you know, traditional industrials, uh, materials and some of these others, energy. Uh, have you been there and, and, there, and there, are there still opportunities there? There's very much still opportunities right now. And I, I think that's actually what's really fascinating to see right now is it's almost like a tale of two markets where you have your technology firms that are doing really well and the S&P 500 is essentially a flat for the year. But when you look at your value companies, those are still down anywhere from 10 to 15% off their highs. And valuation terms, they're right around their historical averages, whereas your most expensive stocks are only getting more expensive. Take Amazon as a great example. It's over 100 times earnings right now, but your value companies are right in line with their averages, still off their highs, and you're going to get some nice dividends here that are going to pay you while we wait for things to recover in the meantime. I think it's kind of a no-brainer if you look for yeah, new places to add money. Yeah, yeah, and I think if we even zero in on that, the, the airlines are intriguing in that respect. Uh, and so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, today uh, Alaska Air got an upgrade, Boeing got an upgrade. It felt like there was a lot of resistance against them. And now all of a sudden, that's the group that's sort of the proxy for all of this. Exactly. And I think we'll continue to see that trend happen where some of your hardest hit sectors are the ones that still have the most rebound potential as we go forward. And I think you're also seeing that with banks and they really have not had quite the rally that your tech firms have. But we also just saw that the in curve just the yield curve just steepened, which is really going to benefit the banks in the long run. So they're another category. I think we're looking at airlines, we got banks, your value stocks in particular. I think there's still a lot of room to grow here. Right. I'm looking at the regionals. I gave up on them a couple of years ago. They're looking really mm -hmm. attractive. Real quick on banks and yield curves. The Fed beats on Tuesday. Uh, they wrap it up on Wednesday. Uh, listen, Powell has hinted at a lot of different things. What do we need to hear from him uh, to, to sort of keep the fuel going with this rally? I think there's no like specific strategy that we need to see, but I think really what we need is just them to let everyone know that they are still willing to step in and do everything that they right, can Courtney. if needed. I got to let you go. You have been spot on with those value ideas and we have benefited from it. Thank you very much.